engaged in this important discussion. And in 2014, the Steno Diabetes Centers, Center in Copenhagen, along with the University College in London and Novo Nordisk, created the city's Changing Diabetes Program. Its aim is to address the social and cultural factors that increase type 2 diabetes vulnerability among certain peoples in urban centers. The program now includes partnerships with 20 cities around the world. I'm proud to say that Vancouver is Canada's first and only city that has gotten involved and was one of the first 10 cities globally to join. It is estimated estimated that about 9.4% of Vancouverites are living with diabetes, which is comparable to the national incidence rates. This overall rate highs who is being most impacted, though. Our city is one of Canada's most socially, ethnically, and economically diverse cities, and not all groups are affected by diabetes at the same rates. In Vancouver's most affluent neighborhoods, diabetes rates are as low as 5%. But in the downtown east side, in my riding of Vancouver East, it is 8%. We also know that indigenous people and people of Chinese and South Asian descent are at a disproportionate risk of developing diabetes. In December of 2017, I wrote the Minister of National Revenue to express my serious concerns over the Liberals Liberal government's mishandling of the disability tax credit. Constituents were dismayed that the Canada Revenue Agency was denying the tax credits to those with insulin-dependent type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes require ongoing expensive treatments. It is not uncommon for an individual to be forced to spend upwards of $10,000 a year on various medical devices and insulin. Often, private insurance plans have gaps that lead to it being not being covered or restrictive caps that leave individuals paying large amounts out of pocket. It is, not, it is no wonder that the Canadian Diabetes Association found that 57% of Canadians with diabetes say they don't comply with their therapy because they cannot afford the costs of the supplies, devices, and medications. The impacts of this are far-reaching. Unable to comply with their therapy, it puts people at risk, increased risk of serious health complications. In addition to the human impact, this adds strain to our healthcare system as it must deal with completely avoided emergency interventions. It doesn't need to be this way, Mr. Speaker. New Democrats, since the time we won the fight for Medicare in the country under Tommy Douglas, have always believed that our work was not done until we also have a universal public pharmacare plan. Mm -hmm. The health and financial impact of not having a universal public pharmacare plan is clear as day when we look at the impacts of diabetes in this country. We must also keep in mind that prevention is cheaper than intervention. We know that there are other social policies we can engage in to reduce the risk of people developing diabetes in the first place. These policies will keep Canadians healthier and save our healthcare system valuable resources. Due to this cost to diabetes therapies, it is without question that those unable to comply due to costs are less financially secure. In Vancouver, so much of this has to do with the lack of affordable housing. Where there's kicking the can down the road on funding the National Affordable Housing Plan instead of actually breaking ground on projects or avoiding any action on money laundering schemes that inflate real estate prices, this Liberal government is failing to address the national housing crisis that's acutely severe in Vancouver and in my riding of Vancouver East. Too often, my constituents are forced to choose between paying rent and paying for insulin, and this is wrong. My colleagues, the member for North Island Power River and the member for Scotchla, have tabled bills in this House to take real action to affirm housing as a human right. It is shameful that the Liberal government doesn't agree. We also know that diet has a significant impact on increasing the risk of developing diabetes and worsening the condition if you're already living with it. Once again, Canadians struggling to make ends meet find themselves less able to have a healthy, well-balanced diet. Food security in low-income areas leave lower-income Canadians struggling to eat well. This creates a third difficult choice for too many residents of Vancouver East, rent, medicine and food. 
Again, it doesn't need to be this way. My colleague, the member for Berthia, Mask and Longe tabled a bill here to address food waste. Again, both the Liberals and Conservatives opposed our efforts. Another colleague, the member for Kootenai Columbia, tabled a bill to recognize the importance of local food. Mm -hmm. The NDP understands the vital role that food security plays in ensuring Canadians are healthy and able to contribute to their fullest. We need to do more to both recognize and address the roles that housing and food security plays in diabetes prevention and maintenance. The Vancouver Second Mile Society provides health clinics each year, which include diabetes testing. They also do great work with their healthy programs in preventing seniors from living in isolation and poverty. The Vancouver Native Health Society works to, pro to provide knowledge and support for food sustenance development and reducing barriers of access to the natural environment and nutritious traditional foods. They also run a medical clinic which offers diabetes self-management program, a free learning program to help people with type 2 diabetes better manage their symptoms. Then there is the Vancouver Chinese Diabetes Education Center, which exists through partnerships with the Vancouver Coastal Health and the Chinese Canadian Medical Society of BC run out of success. The center is a great resource for individuals with diabetes and their families to learn about diabetes management, its nature and causes, nutrition and meal planning, the role of exercise, medication and self-monitoring. There's also the kitchen program at the Downtown Eastside Women's Center and the Chinese Elders Community Kitchen with the Downtown Eastside Neighborhood House. REACH Community Health Center uses a collaborative model that supports elder health and address social factors like loneliness and isolation, as these can be detrimental to overall health and wellness. I would be remiss if I don't also acknowledge the incredible work that neighborhood houses play. Whether it's food programs, cooking clubs, or community lawn lunches at the Mount Pleasant Neighborhood House or the Community Kitchen and Sage Food Bank at Kawasa Neighborhood House to just name a few of Vancouver's neighborhood houses. They are vital in their efforts to improve the health and well-being of my constituents living with diabetes and all of my constituents for that matter. I'm proud to stand in this house in support of motion M173, but I also believe we need to act and that we know so many avenues that action can be taken. We just need the political well. Diabetes impacts over 3 million Canadians every day. Its impacts are far ranging because of the far range of factors that impact the disease itself. That is why I believe that we need to be looking at diabetes through a holistic intersectional lens. Its exercise, its diet and food security, its housing security and affordability. Its access to health care is access to affordable prescription drugs. So much of this ultimately comes back to income security and inequality. I think that this is, this I think this then provides a real launch point to examine big picture changes to social policy and programming. The prevalence and impact of diabetes in our society is far reaching and requires far reaching actions. One such action that I think we need to discuss is the missing and murder inquiry women uh, inquiry call to justice 4.5 which states which states quote we call upon all governments to establish a guaranteed annual livable income let's make the opportunity that motion m173 provides us to recognize the interconnectedness of all of this and let's think big about solutions thank you mr speaker